So during Tim's uh, amazing career, he had the opportunity to work with so many different uh, vocalists, uh, songwriters, and he loved a really good voice and he loved a really good songwriter. And I know that he loved this next person I'm gonna to speak to. Um, there are so many people waiting for me to talk to him. So I reached out and he said he would be here to pay tribute to Tim. This is Sandro Cavasa. Hey man. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. So glad that you could join in this tribute so uh, am I, to dude. Tim. I mean, what an amazing human being and artist and that we had the pleasure of working with and creating art to share with the world. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've heard stories about how you guys met, um, <laughs> but be, before that, you coming from Sweden, obviously would have known about Avicii before, you know, probably the rest of the world, I'm assuming, but also did you know about Tim Berg? What were you familiar with? When was the first time you heard anything from Tim Bergling or Avicii? Uh, I would say Levels was the, was the first thing. Like everyone was dancing to it everywhere in Sweden. It was yeah. uh, just took off and then uh, I think it just moved forward from there, like uh, the, the amazing music that you guys did together. Uh, that was obviously like the biggest, uh, uh, the break point, I think, maybe. Because the level was, I don't know if level, level started out being just an, a, an, without uh, even a, a voice on it, right? right. I think uh, it was just that like the melody and people went absolutely crazy. And were you familiar with that? You You heard that? It yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone in Sweden, but I was like, I don't know, I was 16, maybe 17 when that when that really took off. So yeah. everyone was just dancing, going crazy in Sweden over that song. That's dope. It's dope to know that, um, you know, he was playing it out without uh, the vocal from Etta James and then yeah. and then eventually added it in. Oh, wow. So you obviously were able to become a fan, uh, you know, at that at that point with pretty close proximity to, I mean, how, I don't know exactly where Tim would have grown up in Sweden, if it was in Stockholm proper or a little bit outside. Like I was in Stockholm proper, proper. And you? Uh, I was a little bit outside. I was uh, uh, like the suburbs, um, kind of like, uh, I guess, Pasadena would be to, to LA. <laughs> right. You know, like, uh, I would yeah, say yeah. That, like uh, Stockholm is uh, much more dense, so it was like it wasn't like that far to the city center. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's kind of how it was. So we came from kind of different backgrounds, I would say. Um, like he was in the and he was in the, in the midst of everything that was happening. You know, like Swedish house mafia people. Sure. Went to school with uh, uh, the same school as uh, Sebastian from uh, uh, Swedish house mafia. Uh, if I'm if I'm not one hundred. Is that off. like a was it a a special kind of school or was it just like regular high school or I think it was just regular man yeah. I, I think uh, I, I think it was just like um just uh, for some reason it just came out like alesso also was i think he was at least in the in the same group of people as the as swedish house mafia and you know they all knew of each other from what i from what i've understood and uh, i think it was just really just a creative spot yeah, you hear stories like that, like people who um, all were, I guess, building their skill and their talent at the same time, and then they all blow up and they're coming from the same schools or the same neighborhoods. Mm. Um, so interesting. You you ended up uh, not really meeting Avicii until I think you came to Los Angeles, right? Oh, it was actually after LA, man. I really? Was, yeah, because I was really just like, I was playing, at, you know, I went with, uh, I had a lot of uh, dreams of being a songwriter. So I went to... Uh, so wait, just dreams of being a songwriter? Like what about yeah. like a singer, like a star on stage performing? Well, uh, as a singer, I think uh, the singing came with the songwriting for me. Like people, well, Tim eventually picked up a song that I wrote in the, around a kitchen table. Uh, <laughs> like I was just like, uh, I wrote Gonna Love Ya uh, around the... Uh, a kitchen table with my yeah. friend and, and then we sent it off and then uh through his management at the time tim heard it and then uh, like decided to go with it and uh, yeah it was like it, it was just a coincidence really that he 
that you know he picked it up. And so you you have obviously demo your own songwriting. Yeah. And he decided to keep the the same vocalist. Yeah, yeah. So and that I, that's a special thing because Tim, this is it was yeah. after levels. This is after Wake Me Up. Yeah. Right. This is when he could have any artist in the world yeah. to sing to sing the song. Yeah. But he found magic in in your instrument. Mm. And I think that's what made Tim so so special and uh, also uh, why I owe, owe a lot of things to Tim for sure. Uh, like in my career in my life and uh, and everything not only for for our friendship but also like of course like work wise and some of the music that we made together is uh, to this day some of the best songs that I've uh, ever you know written. Oh my goodness. I mean like I can honestly say like Wake Me Up is definitely one of the best songs that I've ever written and it it's it magic. Actually man. it actually <laughs> I thank you so much but it actually did what you expect a good song that you write to do in the world. It uh you know yeah exceeded my expectations. Oh, and so for for you that like with wild man like that must have been such a crazy just that that the takeoff of that it must have been like it's it's epic. It still is though, because it's one of those songs that everybody knows and remembers where they were yeah. when they first heard it, or something like that. And so I'm just happy to have that had that experience. But like for you, um, let's say like with a song without you, you know, yeah. um, tell me the story behind that. Oh, uh, how it came about? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. So uh, we yeah we were we went on that bus trip like the bus right. trip. <laughs> uh, we started off in Malibu, um, just like starting up small, uh, you know, embryos of uh, of songs, and just like they started like really growing up, so to say, in in the in the tour bus uh, between like LA and uh, in Miami. We just wrote a bunch of songs, and just one night uh, after we had been. You know, we went to all these crazy national parks and uh, Tim had this crazy idea of making like an undercover, um, you know, like live stream of us writing songs in, in Grand Canyon. You know, he was such a visionary person and like um, he didn't want to. He was like, oh, the fans, they will find it. Let's not let's not promote it. It's that's that's just, no, that's just a sellout. Let's just do it for us and for the fans and and the experience mm -hmm. was just incredible and we were so inspired and uh you know after one one of those things i think we went on um some sort of tram up into the mountains in albuquerque i, I don't know it was just uh, so crazy uh, yeah it was insane and after one of those trips like the live streams we still had so much inspiration that we went into the tour bus and we decided to write more and then we finished uh, without you in the back of the bus while the while the bus driver was like you know he was blasting acdc or something <laughs> on the radio it was multitasking on like a different level because we uh yeah it was just so 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 insane and the the day after we showed it because we arrived in austin so we showed uh we basically showed the song to tim and you know, like you know how Tim was, you know. Yeah. He was just so, like you know, nothing was good, like good enough at the first try. You know, he was so he was so great at at not giving up on ideas and not settling just for the first idea, right? Very intense. So we were like standing like two schoolboys, like, "Hey, man, what do you think about right. this?" Place? And we basically showed him like. You said that we would always be like I was just saying it with Carl playing the guitar, you know, and Carl having worked with like, you know, you name it, like yeah, Ricky, everyone, like he was still like super shy, like we were felt so shy because we were like, okay, great master, what do you think about this? <laughs> and like, he was just like, uh, well, that's that's done. You know, like, that's perfect. Leave it, man. Like he never, he had never said that. And we we wrote like five songs, and every time it was like, ah, let's tweak that melody. Let's Sandra, can you sing that differently? Like it, you know. <laughs> oh, he knew it right away. That's awesome. Yeah. And and it it proved it, especially when it came out. Like it 
was huge. Yeah, it it really it really yeah it took off like you were saying like beyond uh, my imagination. It was uh, yeah it exceeded everything that I could have hoped for for a song. I, I just knew that I loved it and Tim loved it. And actually, this is so funny. Tim said when we wrote that he was like, I get the same feeling from this like in my in my you know in my heart that oh. he like that he got from uh, Wake Me Up. Oh, he used that I, as a reference of the feeling of like knowing that the song would be good. So yeah, yeah. just so you know, it's it's uh, that's important because you you put effort and time into great lyrics, and uh, and and a good melody as well. Now, when when I did Wake Me Up, I think you know he didn't he didn't critique any of my words. Mm. Um, he kept most of the melodies, but one of the things we ended up working really hard on was like, like the extra spicy melodies that we did okay, yeah. for the runs in, in the vocal yeah, production. Yeah. So I just, I just remember those moments being really intense of him just being very particular about which notes to, to try to hit or, you know, some, some things to, to approximate when I was yeah. in, the, in the booth. I think I saw that in the, in the documentary. Yeah, right? that's, that's definitely, you that's, see. That's in there, right? I think that was an important piece of the documentary to show because he a lot of folks. It. He was like, he was like conducting all like, no, no, can you do that again? Can, uh, he was so specific, we, right? We did so many different runs, and um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I knew what he was going to choose at the end. Yeah, but he, the ones that he chose are iconic. Like, I, you know, it took yeah. me a while. It took me a while to learn to do them. And so that I oh, could wow. have them perfect okay, every time when I did them on stage. And now it's like muscle memory, but before. And then you have, you, know, mu you must have made like a million then if you don't even remember the runs or you're just really free vocally. <laughs> it, honestly, and it's not only that, I just have really poor melodic memory. So I'll do okay. something and I, would, I wouldn't remember what I did five seconds ago. Uh, um, but he, <laughs> he knew it. He knew, he was like, nope, that's not the, what you did. Do yeah. Try it again. But speaking of, uh, speaking of that, I think that Tim was just... Uh, he was just the best at melodic, me uh, like uh, memory or just like melody in general. Yeah, melody, like what he loved when he heard it. Like, oh, let's do that again. Like, can you do more of this? Can you? He was so specific, and I think you need to have that ability in order to, for for you to to be able to pick and like to pick up things like that. Because he was so fast. Like his his brain was always like on on like some sort of hyperdrive, you know? Right. <laughs> it, was, it was. It was so fast. Yeah. Um, there are some other songs I want to ask you about. You also had a, a song with um, uh, Forever Yours with Kygo. Yeah. Um, can you talk um, about this one a little bit? Yeah. Uh, so, you, I mean, Forever Yours was a song that actually the, the weirdest thing about that is that when it came out, like Tim, Tim played it at Ultra, right? So we wrote it, we finished uh, our, like a demo on the bus and then he played it uh, at Ultra. And the funny thing is that I was like, you know, I was singing on five or six ideas at the time. Like he just threw a bunch of songs in my face and said like, can you sing on all of these? And I was like, well, let's try. I was the only vocalist around. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, some of them he pitched up and pitched down and, and, you know, just to make me sound like different. So it didn't sound like me. Cause he was like, oh, otherwise it's just going to be weird if you're on every song on like my new releases. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like forever yours uh, became an ID that like people really loved, but everyone, everyone thought, I mean, literally everybody asked like Tim, like, oh, he's going to work with a low again. Like, so he, they really thought it was you. The, oh, wait. So the, he, yeah. when, he, when he modified the voice? Yeah, they modified my voice. They told me and they pitched me down a bit and they were like, oh, they're going to work together again. And I was like, <laughs> no, they're not. But I'm not gonna comment yeah. with everything. Like, oh, that's not fair. I, was thing that I was like, "Well, that's that's just a huge compliment for me." So, <laughs> wow. uh, but that was funny. I I just remember, and and it was the same thing. Like with the stories album, you know, like I came in very late on. I had a top line uh, on a song called "Sons of Jesus." Yes. Like, yes. And everyone thought it was Gavin. 
Well, he's on the songwriting. He's on the songwriting. Yes, yes, yes. But it's so hilarious, like, cause uh, I, I was the, I was the final voice. I guess I kind of tried to sound similar, cause I, I just love the tone. Like I love Gavin DeGraw. Mm -hmm. God, great singer. But like Billboard, I mean, fact check. Yeah, no, fact check it. Yeah. Fact check. No, no, they were like, oh, and Gavin's voice, it's great. I'm like. <laughs> So I've basically been every American uh, great singer that I know. Well, of. that's that's what's up. You, you're um. Yeah, I think you're in good company. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, maybe we can answer some some questions from some of the uh, yeah. you know the folks that have been asking um, from on Twitch. There's Primer Primera Yoko nineteen. Uh, we would love to get some kind of statement about unreleased tracks. Maybe some info. If, um, if they're still on the roadmap, I don't. I, think so. <laughs> I, I can't imagine there's gonna. I, I don't have any control over what they're gonna end up releasing. Uh, the yeah. record label and his family. So, it, but I, like you said, you recorded a lot uh, and yeah. did a lot with Tim. So you're sitting on some unreleased things, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, we had a, a couple of songs. Um, I think some of them weren't really uh, like there's one song that I didn't write. I think that maybe we'll move on uh, with the original vocalist. Uh, I just came on as a demo vocalist. Um, but I kind of feel like I've had my, um, my share of uh, tribute songs for a while, at least uh, with yeah. forever yours being a, a tribute that goes to the family, like the, to, to the Tim uh, uh, foundation. Um, cause I think there's just like, there's always going to be that, that thing where it's, will I be satisfied with the result if it's not Tim producing, uh, will the fans be happy enough? Cause I mean, the demos are still demos. So I think it's, uh, it's a matter of, uh, if it's, uh, I don't know if it's possible to finish it. Um, I'm not 100% closed, but I, I think it's really tough. It's such a tough thing because nobody can sound like Tim. And think about it. We would only, if anybody was to do it, and it, especially in the way that the album Tim was put together, which was, you know, very, very close to mm. him passing. There's so much time that has gone on, right? So what would Tim sound like today? Yeah. I mean, the way that he was learning and growing, I don't even think we can imagine what it would be. We would only be able to like make it sound like what he did two years ago. Yeah, that's so true. And it's not really fair to to um, and I, I, to the fans I, or to I him. I agree, and I think that like that was the that was his uh, his gift was that he was ahead of the curve. The production that he did for for Wake Me Up was ahead of its time uh, in terms of like pushing the envelope of the, mm -hmm. the, you know, EDM stuff and the DJ stuff uh, a lot. Um, and I mean, that's what he was always trying to do, tr trying to create something new. And uh, I, I think it's like creatively impossible to, you can't mimic, you can't emulate, you can't for like, you can't for, for, for see like how that would sound as you're saying. And I think, it, yeah. So I think it's hard. But I love the songs. I really do love the yeah. songs. I was really proud of them when they, you know, when we wrote them and, and uh, you know, asked with a lot of good songs. But it's just like sometimes uh, maybe, you know, we just have to face the fact maybe that it's just like it might come out, but more likely it won't come out. Yeah, I think it all depends on how it's presented. Um, and Yeah, of course. And this, and how the story is told about what the songs were and what stage they were in. Yeah. Um, there's another another person on Twitch. That one smarty he's is asking, uh, when did you last communicate with Tim? Me? Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> like in person or when I just a, like, it could uh, be an email or a uh, text or. Oh well, the text was. Um... I think it was a little bit before the the he started like wrapping up his uh, the last album, but I kind of um, like before um, before the the uh, what do you say like the the memorial uh, the the concert the tribute, tribute. Concert, mm -hmm. 
I try to channel some energy and I kind of went out in the, you know, there's a lot of uh, forests here in Stockholm and like in Sweden. So I kind of went out to the forest and I was just like, I don't know. I, I kind of like, you know, there's, I don't know if, if it's like, a, you know, how people sometimes go to, uh, you know, uh, you know, to the, the graveyard or whatever to talk yeah, to yeah, yeah. relatives. And I kind of tried to channel it and I was just trying, I was kind of talking to Tim about how insane, like everything has been since he passed. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's the last time, like I communicated with him. Yeah, so for say. sure. But I think about him all the time. So I think that's also some sort of communication. Like every day I'm reminded of Tim. Like it doesn't have to be because of the song, like because of the songs or it's just like, you, you, sometimes I just, I just, you know, I just think about him. And I think yeah. it's every day, like it, it can be fans or I can just walk around and then it's like, oh. I feel oh, yeah. you. There's, it's, it's, he's always around. He is always around. I mean, when I, there's just moments where, um, it's very, very strange. Like I've lived in my house for seven, uh, yeah, seven years, going on eight years. And when Tim passed, um, and we were putting together the song SOS. Just a lot of different energies, different things I started feeling and started just got a sense that he was there. Like he was mm. there guiding the process, guiding the project. Mm. Um, lights in my house that never flickered ever, right? Mm -hmm. Would flicker. In the middle of an interview in a recording in the recording studio where we first met. Mm. Nobody touching the doors, nobody moving, because it was just like me and the camera crew, a door slams. And so I'm always feeling like, okay, mm. it's just, whether it's him or not, it's mm. definitely a reminder, like his spirit and his energy is strong and powerful. And, uh, you know, I could just be making these things to be like, those are moments of Tim. But for me, I'd rather it be that way. I'd rather believe that, yes, his energy's here and he's, he's present and, um, and he, and we can help keep his legacy yeah. alive by continuing I mean, to. Yeah, I mean, we're here two years, two years after, and I mean, it it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, like for, for me, it's just like time has just passed so, like it it just stands still and it's moving so fast at the same time because Tim is just like constant person, it and he has been that for like what seven years of my life since the first time he like picked up my demo of that song of gonna love you and i was like oh wow is this happening <laughs> what's happening am i not eating oatmeal every day anymore what's how is this gonna affect my life oh. yeah um anna maria v3 asks are there any funny stories that you remember from the songwriting process with tim and i can imagine being on tour across the country <laughs> Uh, so many some of them involves like his dog at the time liam like that the whole tour was named after prince liam of the north prince <laughs> liam oh they were naming the dog with the tour so it's so funny i mean he took i mean in malibu while we were writing music upstairs he took some serious like okay he was a puppy so he took some serious like he relieved himself or how you say mm. like very expensive carpets downstairs and we're talking like what 10 grand a piece and like the funny thing was also that tim went downstairs and when he saw it he was just laughing it was like first he was like oh my god but then it was just like oh he's so cute <laughs> <laughs> of that zebra carpet expensive leopard genuine leather oh. whatever <laughs> Uh, that was just one of the things. I mean, there's so many. Um, like, uh, it was just there was just like, but there was. Did I, I, did Tim ever write lyrics with you? Oh, he did. He did. I think he got more into it. Into it, like eventually, like he was getting more involved with the songwriting process all the time. Um, from what I have understood, like at first he was just like the producer guy. You know what I mean? And like. 
the first couple of years that he was working. And then like when he, when we met up, he was such a great lyricist because he was trying to pick out things that stood out. Mm -hmm. So he was complimenting the, the songwriting process, even though like, you know, you could, you could write like maybe 50% of a verse and then he would come in and like tweak some stuff that you, that was really generic. He would be like, Oh, that that's just too generic. He was really, really picking that way. Right. Um, there's a question about Promises of Tears. Promises of Tears? Do you know the song? Oh my God, I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe that was just one of the, the songs that we came up with on the spot. Like, cause we wrote like probably 10 songs on that bus tour and people keep sending some of them. And, and, and I honestly don't remember, man. Yeah. And they also like, I, I love how, how people who, who looked at the, at the live stream has like given songs a different name. We had a working name for some things. So I, I actually don't know what song that is. Okay, so you had working names, but sometimes, you know, people will hear them. Because he played things out, like there's same songs that we didn't release that he played out and somehow people have them and now they're on the in internet. Yeah, yeah. That happened for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Of I them. guess that consider that the release. You know, like yeah. If if Tim was um, open enough to share it in a in a live performance, and he knew that somebody is going to be recording it or some, it might yeah, yeah, get yeah. out. Then consider that the release. I guess that's true. You yeah. Know? And you know, not all the tracks that are out there that people say are were Tim songs are Tim songs, and some aren't. True. But then some are. So I guess yeah. happy hunting, fans. You, <laughs> you, you'll, you'll find it. Ask. But I have to yeah. say one thing: that the coolest, the coolest memory. Well, one of the cooler memories of writing with Tim was when we were sitting in the studio, and he was like, "We we wrote a song in like let's say C major, okay." And like at the end of this, uh, like of writing the verse and the chorus, when we came to that part of the progress, he was just like clicking a folder full of like hundreds and hundreds of finished drops, like oh. unbelievable melodies, just sitting on in, on his computer. Like these are things waiting. that he he created and he had oh, yes. in storage. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I'm sitting here with Mozart because he was playing like he was just like previewing, you know, like you could do on it, like you do on your computer. You like you don't even open iTunes, just listen to it. He's like, ah, right. oh, that one is not that great. Then went down to and he was like, oh, I think this one would work. And then he had it in the right key, the kind of the right tempo. I don't think he stretched it much. He was just dragged and dropped. And then he was like, oh, that's that's yeah, that that works. Oh, I, I didn't know that. So I, when I was with him, I saw him building, uh, just building melodies like from scratch. But that, oh, yeah, he do, he this, that is how, well. this is how I work. I, this is how I work. I When I walked into Wake Me Up session, mm -hmm. I have the same kind of thing. I have a file full of lyrics, um, different ideas, sometimes just two lines at a time. And I walked in with these like four lines. Uh, oh, wow. Wake Me Up When It's All Over, When I'm Wiser and I'm Older was one thing separate from all mm. this time I was finding myself didn't know I was lost and put them together and it worked. It's same, same. I think, oh, yeah. you know, be prepared basically. And he was always, yeah, he were, yeah. In that case, he was over prepared because that, I think that's the, that's really the treasure for me was just like all these drops are, are the best I've heard. Yeah. It was so thin. Like all of them were like, you could really hear like it was a fingerprint. Like nobody wrote melodies like Tim did in terms of drops and stuff. And I think it was just incredible that he just he just thought of them like, oh, that's just another one. <laughs> that's just another one. I just gotta yeah. put it away until later when I yeah. write like uh when I write something and I can just oh, this came yeah. at handy. You know? <laughs> he was he was uh an incredible uh bright spirit and an incredible musician and artist and, and you know i i'm better for having had the experience and i'm sure as you say you are as well, well thank you for oh, joining man. me in this tribute to tim i really appreciate you thank you man and i have to say like you you are a great host man you're a really good host 
Bro, I mean, it's. <laughs> I think it's just important we gather at least once a year to to yeah. show some respect for such an amazing person. Thank so you. True, man. Thank you.